Hello, everyone. And I guess this is the sad news that this is the end of the Ask Historians Digital Conference 2020. I do want to say that we're incredibly thankful to everyone who has come along, who's presented papers, who's asked questions, who's joined in the live networking. Uh, you've all helped make this what has been an incredibly special few days, hopefully not just for us organisers, but for everyone who's been involved in some way or another. It's been a really special experience to see such an amazing array of history and historians sort of come to our subreddit and share their work and their perspectives over the last few days. And I think it's a real showcase of the variety of things that's happening in history at this moment and the variety of perspectives that we can find about that history. And I think that it would be very difficult for this many perspectives, um, not just in terms of methodology and subject matter, but also in terms of who these historians are. It would be almost impossible for this to have happened at a traditional conference. If nothing else, the difficulties of international travel, of visas, of accessibility, would likely have prevented many of our panelists from taking part. And I think that in itself is a positive thing that we can take away from the digital conference experiment that we and a lot of other organizations are going through just now. In terms of our conference itself, I mean, the dust is still settling and we don't quite have a full picture of just how big our audience has been or how many people have taken part. But we can say with some confidence that we have reached an audience orders of magnitude larger than just about any in-person conference uh, likely ever has. Just looking at the YouTube video numbers alone, we've had thousands of people look at our recorded panels, and we expect that number to rise significantly over the course of the weekend as we release our keynote speaker, and people have a chance to catch up on the huge amount of history that's been shared over the last few days. But beyond analytics, which can tell us part of the story of what's happened, We've been absolutely blown away by the kind of feedback we've gotten from people who've attended, who've got, made their views known on Reddit or Twitter or other social media. And it's been great to see scholars, not just from within history, but from other disciplines, sort of pay attention and show interest in what we've been trying to do over these last few days. But more than that, it's been the public response that's really kept us going. It's been amazing to hear from our regular readers, from new readers, from people who've never heard of us before, that they're excited to have been part of this kind of event, that there were grateful to have this kind of opportunity to be part of these kinds of conversations. Because holding a digital event in itself is, is, is kind of obvious right now. Everyone's holding digital events because we're in the middle of a pandemic, we can't have other events. But what I hope we've shown over the last few days is that it's possible to think of this not just as a, as a stopgap measure to kind of hold things, hold business as usual using a digital platform. But it's also possible to use those platforms to rethink the logic of how academics talk to each other. Because most scholarly gatherings, they happen behind closed doors, both literally and metaphorically. And some of this gatekeeping that goes on is quite intentional, the kind of credentials and affiliations you need to get taken seriously by selection committees. But inaccessibility is, is really baked into the logic of scholarly gatherings. Being in the room requires the time, the funds, and the ability to travel that a lot of academics, particularly in the Western world, simply take for granted. And what we've shown over the last few days is that another type of conference is both possible, but can also challenge these assumptions. There's not just about accessibility and fairness, but also about enriching the conversation. The conversations that can emerge when we say, actually, you know what, we don't need these barriers. We can let other people participate. We can invite them into the room. Those conversations get better. They don't get worse. They don't get diluted. In any case, as I said, we're all still kind of reeling a bit from the last few days, and we're gonna be taking stock of everything in the coming weeks as we try to get our heads around what has just happened. As with any undertaking of this magnitude, there are far too many people who need to be thanked than I have time to thank right now. I would like to single out our committee heads, Lisa Bear, Safari, Joshua Porter, Peyton Hunter-Jones, who have been absolutely outstanding throughout this entire process. I'd also like to mention our sponsors, Joe Klatsman Higgison of Touche Digital Events, who has been absolutely phenomenal in helping get this event off the ground and making it making sure it runs smoothly and effectively. We can't recommend her services enough. Uh, we'd also like to have a shout out to Fordham University Press, who have uh, sponsored our networking sessions and have been absolutely great, uh, particularly Will, who has been incredibly supportive of what we've been trying to do. In any case, that's more than enough for me. You've heard more than enough historians staring at screens, yelling at you so far during this conference. From all of the people who've helped organize, um, from everyone who's been part of 
the process that's brought us here. Thank you very much for coming. We hope you enjoyed it and have a lovely weekend and stay safe during the rest of this pandemic. Thank you.